Where did you find that fruit? I was given it by the guard your advisor assigned to me. What? I never did such a thing. Ibrahim, I told you to let the secretary act. It seemed that Ibrahim is telling the truth. Then I have been fooled. I have already met the man we are looking for. What does the message say? Three like the sides of a triangle. With the revealed word in the center and in the corners, the elected of the patriarchs, the holy lamb, and the seal of the prophets. This gives me an idea. We have a message from the madman. Three, like the sides of a triangle, with the revealed word in the center and in the corners, the elected of the patriarchs, the holy lamb, and the seal of the prophets. The man is obviously obsessed with the number three, and he likes speaking in riddles. He referred to the introduction to Ecclesiastes, Vanitas Vanitatis. Vanity? It would seem he has plenty of that himself. We must find out what he wanted to show by that. The Holy Lamb. It is obviously a symbol. What does it mean in our puzzle? That, he tells us, it is one of the elements of the triangulation that reveals the word. As for explaining the picture, it is simple. John the Baptist was the first to call Christ the Lamb of God. Hayat talked of the elected of the patriarchs. What could that be? What an easy question. Jacob is the elected of the patriarchs, according to the beliefs of the Hebrew people. Oh, I do not know much about the life of Jacob. He was the grandson of Abraham and the son of Isaac. Jacob had a twin brother, Esau, whose birthright he usurped with the help of his own mother, Rebekah. To escape his brother's rage, Jacob hid at his uncle's house and married his uncle's two daughters. He had 12 sons born of them and their servants, and these were the ancestors of the 12 tribes that formed the Jewish people. The seal of the prophets? Do you think Hayat means a person here? I do not think, Dimi. I know. We call Muhammad thus, as we believe that he closes the cycle of the revelation. God shall not send another prophet after him, and humanity shall have to wait until the end of time for the veil covering the mysteries of the divine plan to be lifted. What do men of God mean by revealed word, exactly? For men, there are only four ways of thinking about the world. One is common to the three religions of the book and it states that the universe is the result of a unique creative will that we call God. God is known to us through his prophets to whom he reveals all his laws and plans for man, his beloved creature. What about the other ways of thinking about the world? First, the visible universe can be perceived as a pure and simple illusion and human energy must be entirely devoted to tearing away the veil of appearance that hides the truth. That is what certain wise men in India think. And the third way? Well, man can have enough pride to believe that reality is only the physical universe around us, and that this universe contains no spirituality. Those who believe this are called materialists. Many philosophers from ancient Greece were materialists, such as Xenophon or Parmenid. You mentioned four ways of seeing the world. What is the last? Oh, that is the most dangerous of all. The way of the idolaters. It says that there is not a single god, creator of the universe, but that all visible space is inhabited by forces with which men can commune. It is the way of the pagans who used to live in your world and ours. It was the religion of the Arabs before Muhammad came to bring us the word of Allah. We call that time Jahiliya, the time of ignorance. But that period is over now.
Have you found anything interesting? A word to find in a triangle made up of three places, marked by Jacob, Jesus, and Muhammad. While waiting for you, I studied the three maps he drew. Is the answer not there? A triangle linking the maps. Hmm, the corners would then be marked by the Cathedral of the Rock twice to commemorate Jacob and Muhammad, and by the Saint Sepulchre once in memory of Jesus. Wax plug. That is not enough. The wax layer is too thick. Not too long. Now I can scratch it off. At my house, messengers. And so the path of the greatest of follies is confirmed. The corners are the places of the three revelations. And the uncovered word is not that of God, but it is His. Is it not strange, this type of supreme vanity? Here is a man who takes his word to be the word of God, and yet he accuses himself of vanity. Unless we've misinterpreted his reference to Ecclesiastes, he doesn't take himself for God, but for Coeleth, the king of Jerusalem and author of this book, and whom tradition identifies as Solomon himself. And so? And so he is not referring to the introduction, but to its conclusion. Vanity of vanities, Coelet said. All is vanity. The fact that he taught science to the people adds to this character's wisdom. We have yet to discover what the science is that he wanted to teach us. Let us do as he advises. Let us drop our vanities and go to his house to find these messengers. Ibrahim must know where he lived before he was imprisoned. I shall ask him to take us there. Are you the widow Pichon? What do you think? I told him the governor's men, God bless him, that I dare not touch his room. I has not touched it, not before or after. So like they said to me, right? I didn't do nothing. Not nothing or I ain't done nothing. Do not fear. We have just come to ask you a few questions. What do the governor's men want? Oh, I does not touch nothing. That is how they repeat it a thousand times. Then they goes to look. Long time, long time, long time. And then they says it again to me at least a hundred times. As if I is deaf. Worse even, they say it so many times, they say it, they say it to me. Did 
Did you rent the room to this man for a long time? Few months, four, I think. Never had no problems, never no disturbances. No, 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 no. What did you think of him? Nice, nice, nice. He was very nice, he was very knowledgeable. He told me lots of lovely things. I liked to listen to him, but I tell him that he spoke too much. One day, he didn't come back, and I heard he'd been arrested. I was real sad, because he weren't too clever to mix up all them religious stories, but he was the kindest man he was. Oh, yes, bless him. Did your tenants sometimes have guests? And did he speak to you about messengers? Never had no one, no, 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 no. And messengers? Messengers of what? Messengers. In Greek, they're called angelos, aren't they? Hayat's messengers were angels. There is sulfur on the ground. Gabriel, seizing Abraham's arm at the moment of Isaac's sacrifice, the ancestor of the Hebrews without whom Christianity and Islam would never have appeared. in this chest. I see. Think I go through people's things, don't you? Well, I don't see. I leave people alone with their bits and bobs. The tidings brought to Mary, one of the most moving scenes in the second of the religions of the book. There was a trap behind the first messenger, and there is another one here. It is a clever idea, but the nozzle of the bellows is too large. Could you make me a very thin nozzle for these bellows? 
My last born could do that for you. Wait here. There you go. How much do I owe you? Nothing, brother. It was not a difficult job, and I like helping people in need. That is a rare and chivalrous attitude. What is your name? Chivalrous. I like that word. My name is Ibn Anur, at your service. I shall not forget it. The angel Gabriel prepares the mortal body of the prophet of the last revealed religion for its nocturnal journey to the heavens of Allah. The cross, the instrument of the passion of Christ. A sajida, the prayer mat used by Muslims. It is a talit, a ritual prayer shawl of the Jewish liturgy, I believe. Two things are confusing me, Ozdemir. The first is how a man as poor as Hayat can have objects of such value in his possession. This chest contains some real treasures. Hayat seems more interested in spiritual riches than material objects, but what is your other source of confusion? Uh, it is more serious. All the traps that gave out the keys were deadly. Up to now, Hayat has always been devious with us, but never dangerous. You are forgetting that he kidnapped Heikma. Some would say that is quite dangerous behavior. Nevertheless, it is true that we should be doubly careful from now on. Do you understand what I am talking about? Yes, the trap in the box room must have been set only recently. Hyatt could not have filled the oil lamp from his cell. So either he has an accomplice, or... Or someone is manipulating him and using this treasure hunt for their own means. To follow the tracks that we have just discovered, I think I shall have to make use of some of my contacts. This object at Hyatt's house. A magnificent crucifix. But I doubt it could help you find Hyatt. I do not think it will help me find him, 
but perhaps it can tell me more about him. You told me that Hayat often came to see you. What about? He was very curious about the history of the church. He already knew a lot about the subject, however, but he always wanted to know more and expressed some strange opinions about it, too. What did he want to know, specifically? What language the Gospels were written in and when the Christian religion became the only religion of the West. I, too, would like to know such things, Father. The Gospels were written in Greek, my child. Well, that is what is generally accepted. Hayat believed they had been written in Hebrew. What were the arguments that Hayat defended? He was troubled by the way Constantine imposed the Christian religion on the Roman Empire. According to Hayat, his conversion was not the result of a revelation, but rather made for personal gain. It is true that Constantine had been responsible for some terrible crimes, crimes that even the priests of his ancestors' religion could not absolve. A Christian bishop was supposedly the only one who promised him forgiveness for his sins on the condition that he made the empire a Christian land. That is what Hayat believes. So, the Roman Empire was the first state to officially become Christian? No. The first state to convert to Christianity entirely was Armenia, right at the beginning of the 4th century. Who was Bar Kochbas? Between 132 and 135 AD, the Jews yet again battled with Rome. Bar Kochbas was the leader of the rebellion. He took refuge in his fortress at Betar with his men, but was defeated by the Emperor Hadrian. After that final revolt, Jerusalem was forbidden to all Jews and became a pagan city named Aelia Capitolina. Well, he is not here yet. Can you tell me what this object is for? What a magnificent talent! It is a shawl that we use for morning and evening prayers. I have never seen one as splendid as this, and the phrase written on it is truly beautiful. Do you know where I can find Colonimus? My master went to pray at the Wailing Wall. You can go and find him there, if you wish. I do not see any writing on this shawl, Isaac. Oh, but it is there, believe me, and it thus respects tradition. Look at the titsits, the fringes around the shawl. Do you see these couples of knots separating the spaces? Yes, threads run through each one. If you count the number of turns the threads make, you will see that each one is different. That is because they indicate the order of the letters of our alphabet. The phrase I was telling you about is not written with symbols, but with numbers. But for us, because we follow the tradition that God taught Adam in the Garden of Eden, it is the same. We read numbers as well as we can add words. Yes, a man in a garden already explained a little of that to me. He even gave me a parchment that shows a few examples. Perhaps I could use it to decipher what is written on the talit. Yes, but it would be easier to just ask me what is written on these tzitzits, as I already know. You are right. So tell me. It is simply an affirmation of the oneness of God. God is one. In numbers, that equals 39. Associating numbers with letters is known as geometry, and it is one of the aspects of the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah? What is that exactly? It is the secret sent to Adam from God while Adam slept for him to name creation. You see, we think that the scriptures, if we make do with their primary meaning, only show one of the numerous realities of the world. By studying and meditating on the holy books, man must open all the other doors and bring out all other meanings. 
That is what the Kabbalah is for. Seems to me that the Kabbalah was also used for magical operations. It is true that some people use it for superstitious means, but there is a story in the Zohar that shows that the Kabbalah's greatest power is not magical. Listen. Rabbi Simeon and his son met an angel as big as a mountain who told them that he was going to destroy the world because there were not 30 righteous men in the generation of the time. Simeon replied, The two of us, my son and I, are enough to protect the world as it is written. Any word, or dabar in Hebrew, shall be established upon the deposition of two witnesses. Now, dabar also means world when written. By the word, or dabar, of God, the heavens were made. At this moment, a heavenly voice sounded out, Happy may you be, Rabbi Simeon. You who have the power to repeal the decrees of the Holy One, blessed may he be. You see, I like that story very much, because it shows how knowledge and Kabbalist manipulation of the language avoided the destruction of all humanity. What is the Zohar? It is the Book of Splendors, the most important book of the Kabbalah. Some say it is the work of a single author who died two and a half centuries ago, the Castilian Moses of Leon. Others believe the Zohar is not an original work, but a collection of sometimes very old Kabbalist works. Wherever truth can be found, the Zohar is considered to be a little like the counterbalance of the Talmud. What do you mean exactly when you speak of Kabbalist manipulation of the language? It is said that in paradise, Adam carried the entire Torah on his face, but none of the letters that made up the text were separated. This gigantic word was the great name of the one God. But once the first man had sinned, the letters were mixed up and separated one after another. By manipulating the language, the Kabbalists try to rebuild the order of the primordial Torah. When they find a fragment of it, or discover a link between two terms that had lost their identity, they can even cancel divine decrees. That is what the story of Rabbi Simeon and his son shows us. Why is the Zohar against the Talmud? The largest part of Jewish law is contained in the Torah. But it is accompanied by the rabbinical laws of the Halakha, the Mishnah, which is the record of verbal laws handed down in ancient times, and the Talmud, which is the commentary on these. Talmudists were Pharisees who approached the mysticism and interiority of religious feeling with some mistrust. The Zohar shows slightly less rigid and legalist hopes and thoughts than those expressed by the Talmud. <sighs> that is all a little confused. Hmm? Perhaps. But you will undoubtedly understand better if I show you a picture to clarify everything. Imagine that Judaism is a mountain. The Talmud is the slope facing the light, where the villages stand. And the Zohar is the side that remains in the shade, and is only visited by those who are not content with the Talmud, those Maomides calls the lost. But what would the sunny side be without the other side to support it? It would collapse, and there would be no mountain. And do you know anyone who likes flat countryside? Who were the Pharisees? They were the ruling class of our people when they returned to captivity in Babylon, until Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans 70 years after the Christian Messiah. The Pharisees did not have a good position in the Gospels because they fought violently against Jesus, whom they took as an agitator. Excuse my ignorance, but who was the Maimonides? He was a little like your Saint Thomas of Aquinas. He was actually, virtually his contemporary. And like Thomas, Maimonides tried to reconcile rationalism born out of Aristotle's philosophy and the mysticism of faith. Why were the Hebrews taken to Babylon? Because of a war of conquest. My people were taken as the spoils of war by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon in the year 586 BC of the Christian era. The destruction of the first temple dates back to that time. Half a century later, another king, Cyrus, freed us and allowed us to build the temple and even the walls of Jerusalem. But when you see Calonymus, he will tell you more of this.
Colonymous, may I interrupt your prayers for a second? I am listening. Colonymous, I found this Talith at Hayat's home. I think it a little strange that a man as poor as him should have a shawl of such value in his possession. What do you think? It is not unusual for poor men to be very pious and prefer to spend the little means they have on religious objects rather than satisfy more mundane needs. But you are right, there is something unusual about this talit. A tiny embroidery of silver thread through these two dark bands. Do you see it? I showed this shawl to Isaac and he did not notice this. A ray of reflected light on the metal thread made me look closer. Otherwise, I would not have seen it either. What does the inscription say? It is a name, and probably a date from the Hebrew calendar. Burgos 5252. Talits do not usually contain this sort of text. Do you usually come here to pray? Not usually in the way you mean, my child. Let us say that it is above all an act of fervour, hope and remembrance. These remains are the remains of a revolutionary time for my people, the time of our independence, our unity and our strength. We wish that one day the children of Zion will again be reunited in the Promised Land and will be able to rebuild the Temple of Solomon so they can complete their destiny as the leader of all nations. Why do you call this place the Wailing Wall? The Muslims and Christians gave it this name, not the Jews. For us, it is rather the Wall of Hope, because we pray that one day, on this ruined wall, the great temple of our faith shall be rebuilt. What do you call Zion, Colonymous? It is the name of the fortress taken by King David, and that he made his city, Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. It means the city of peace. But in the scriptures, Zion also means all Judea, and even all the people of the house of Israel. How was David recognized as king by the Hebrews? Oh, you are right to ask that question. Usually, Christians just know that David was a shepherd who killed a giant with a stone. But for many, the story ends there. And so, listen. At around the time when Homer told the story of the War of Troy, 1,250 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, invaders arrived on the coast of the east, among them brandishing iron swords and driving chariots of war, the Philistines clashed with the Israelites, who, without a leader, and almost without arms to defend themselves, suffered heavy losses, until Samuel, a priest of the one God, made Saul king of Israel. And then the battle began to turn. Moab, Edom, and all the other enemy kingdoms of the Hebrews were soon defeated, but because he spared an enemy, and thus disobeyed Yahweh, Saul was abandoned by divine benevolence. Upon his death, David, who had already been crowned with glory for having killed the warrior giant Goliath, succeeded Saul to the throne and asserted the supremacy of the Hebrews over the land of Canaan. David took Jerusalem and Solomon, his son, built the first temple where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. But when Solomon died, the land of the Hebrews was divided into two kingdoms, Judea to the south and Israel to the north. And the Hebrew people found division and pain. Burgos is in Spain. Yes, there was a large Jewish community there once. What date in the Christian calendar does 5252 correspond to? Our calendar starts with the creation of the world 3,761 years before the birth of the Christian's Messiah. So you need to add... Uh, no, take away... Well, take the date preceding that. 
Oh, yes, but they are also 13-month years, so that makes it... Uh, uh, actually, I don't know. This will be faster. It is the year 1492, when the Jews were expelled from Spain. Hmm. Whoever carried this talent in Burgos in 1492 must have had a difficult life. It was a time of forced conversion, escape or death. They had no other choice. You met Hayat. How old do you think he is? He is exactly the same age as me, 67. It is 1552. He was born in 1485 then, and perhaps in the Jewish community of Burgos, if this Talit is to be believed. Old enough to understand and remember. Do you know whether Hayat is Jewish? Yes, he is, but he's an apostate. He gave up the religion of his forefathers and created his own system, which was a sort of syncretism between the three religions of the book. You spoke of the first temple. Does that mean there are several? Two. If tradition is to be believed, the first sanctuary was built by Master Hiram of Tyre, an architect who knew great secrets. The temple housed the Ark of the Covenant, a chest in which the tables of the law were kept, but it was destroyed when the city was taken by the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. That was when the Ark disappeared. The second temple was destroyed by the Romans when they took Jerusalem in 70 of the Christian era. Thank you, Colonymus. I shall not forget what you have taught me. Memory is the sister of truth, Adrian, as surely as forgetting and lying are their evil opposites. Alif, Lam, Mim, thus says the book. It contains no doubt, it is a guide for those who fear God, those who believe in the mystery, those who fulfill their duties of prayer. May I interrupt your meditation, holy man? Oh, uh, do not worry about disturbing me. <laughs> Talking with a friend is one of the most beautiful forms of meditation I know. <laughs> oh, it is a great pleasure to see you again. I know that this is a sajada, a prayer mat, but I would like to know its symbolic value for Muslims. Oh, the sajada is like a door, but a door that opens onto a specific time, not a place. This time is the time of intimacy with our Creator. I found this mat at Hayat's house. Can you tell me anything special about it? Oh, uh, I do not know. Um, you should consult Master Jamal, the head of the Tariqah of Carpet Makers. But he has left for Hajj with the caravan before last. He shall not be back for some weeks. You spoke of a Terikha. Is that some sort of brotherhood? Yes, there are Tarikas for all trades in Islam. But they are more than simple groups of craftsmen. To be a member of a Tarikha is to follow the path of a true master of skill, as most of their patriarchs are also Sufis. And that is why the Empire helps to develop these brotherhoods. I understand that Soliman had a great respect for the Sufis. Is there any special reason for that? Oh, yes. When 
Selim, the father of Solomon, fought the Mameluk dynasty of Cairo. He rallied the Sufis to his cause. The Sufis were much respected by the people because for a long time they had opposed the Egyptian sultans and their severe and inefficient form of government that was nonetheless supported by Sunni dignitaries. But that is how the Sufis became allies of the new political regime. It is an edifying reversal of the situation, no? <laughs> As the Sufis now have a similar role to the Sunni orthodoxy in the time of the Mamelukes, who opposes the empire? That is a difficult question. Uh, let us say that there is no opposition as such, but sources of popular discontent are sometimes voiced by members of the Futuwa. I do not know what the Futuwa are. They are a kind of brotherhood of young people with very strict codes of honor. Chivalrous, almost. They can be found in all the large cities of the Empire. What are the sources of popular discontent you talk about? Oh, well, um, since the Europeans found shipping routes to go and find spices and silk from India themselves, our cities no longer have the same importance for trade. They're beginning to lose their wealth. But the state does not understand this and continues to ask for more tax. And so young people in the Futuwas are agitated as they are very sensitive to questions of social justice. Do you think Hayat was in contact with members of the Futuwa? It is more than likely. Hayat saw many people, and these groups are in the middle of the people. They're not difficult to find. I think I may even have met someone who could be one of them. Thank you for sharing a little of your knowledge with me, holy man. It will be of great use to me. Our knowledge is like a flame that passes from torch to torch, Adrian. Those who give it, do not lose it. <laughs> Are you prepared to help me, friend? What can I do for you? Forget another instrument? No, forge me an answer instead. Did you know the man who was lodging with your neighbor, the Widow Pichon? Hayat, of course I knew him. He often came to speak with me after his day's work. I liked him. I learned what he did. It surprised me. Are you sure he is the one who kidnapped the governor's daughter? It would seem so, yes. But you say he worked? He was a preacher. That was his job. He walked the streets of Jerusalem preaching of love. It did not harm anyone, but the authorities preferred to lock him up. I wanted to go and visit him in prison, but one of the Chamberlain's men told me he had been hidden away. I found that a little strange, but did not insist. Did Hayat tell you about his life? Yes, a little. I know he was born in the Jewish community of Burgos before his fellow Jews were expelled. His family sought refuge in Portugal. Then he was sold like a slave to Muslims and bought by Christians. He certainly had an adventurous life. And one that brought him into close contact with men of all religions, for better or for worse. This dwelling certainly attracts covetousness. It was nothing, just a few flames to put out. 
I'm used to dealing with fire. Nothing to fear. He was a sprightly one. That man, a force of nature. Oh, he stopped the fire all on his own, so he did. I found this among the ashes. I do not know if it is of any importance. you come here to burn this manuscript? None of your business, you damn snoop. You can have me slug in prison, but I won't stay there long. The governor's days are numbered. I'm sure the governor will be very interested in what you have just insinuated. Let us continue this conversation in his presence. Governor, this man was sent to Hyatt's home to find and destroy a manuscript we did not see upon our last visit. We are not the only ones to be looking for Hayat, it seems. I think our madman has escaped from whoever was controlling him. Ozdemir is right, Governor. Hayat could not have escaped, kidnapped your daughter, and taken the relic all on his own. By the way, where was Abraham's dagger actually kept? In my work desk. But that was no secret. All the staff here could have known that. I answer for Ibrahim as for myself, Ozdemir. He has been my aide for more than 30 years, and he saved my life at the Battle of Mohacs against the Hungarians. Adrian, do you think we could find something in the piece of ash that is dirtying your fingers? One of the pages in Hebrew is a quote from Isaiah on death, and I think I recognize a passage from the Epistle to the Romans concerning the resurrection. The words Nakir and Munkir are written in Arabic. The names of the angels of death. That is not a good omen, secretary. Perhaps not. I think it talks of death as a door which opens onto another existence, a better life. That is surely the path of hope, according to Hayat. I doubt if the governor will be particularly lenient in the sentence you receive for your judgment. Except, perhaps, if you decide to tell us who you are working for, Whatever happens, the governor's justice will stop at my head. He who asked me to search Hyatt's home will have no hesitation in making my loved ones pay if I betray him. Oh, leave me a little while to think on which side I should tip the balance. I accept your proposal. I shall leave you the night to decide. We shall meet again tomorrow morning at dawn. The evening is already old. Let us all rest a little. The dawn will soon approach, and tomorrow we will all need Allah's favor. May we all have enough strength to warrant it. Adrian, either you are a fool, or... Or I have an idea in the back of my mind. Yes, Ozdemir, I must ask you to use your authority. To discreetly watch the fire starter's cell. That can be arranged. And what will you do during that time? Pay a nocturnal visit to one of our friends. I see, I see. I see, but I do not want to know. Well, not yet. Until tomorrow, Adrian, and may night be your accomplice. The night is my accomplice, and the day my traitor. Is that not what the poet Al-Jahiz wrote? You are as well read as a scribe, and you sometimes ask questions as naive as an infant, Adrian. I think Hayat and you had quite a lot in common. I am beginning to understand him. I'm convinced we will find Haikma safe and sound tomorrow. If nothing terrible happens to you beforehand.